and welcome to this Stair Tailored. I'm Erica Mason from the University of Missouri. Today's topic is part of a series of videos about cognitively demanding tasks, and today's video is about how you go about creating those cognitively demanding tasks. Mathematics education researchers Margaret Smith and Mary Kay Stein have developed this framework for understanding the level of cognitive demand that's inherent in each mathematical task. Uh, those levels include memorization, procedures without connections, procedures with connections, and doing mathematics. For more information about each of these levels, you can check out one of our other Stair Tailored videos. So in order to adapt a task that you might already have in your existing curriculum, right, so you don't need to create brand new problems, you don't need to go buy something new, but instead you can look at the problems you already have, and perhaps you've identified some low-level cognitive demanding tasks, you can engage in one of these four strategies to adapt your task in really simple ways, and these will help you increase the cognitive demand. So let's take a look at these. The first strategy is called reversibility. And in this uh, strategy, you just reverse what you ask students to do. You reverse the kind of information you give them. So here's an example. Write an algebraic equation whose solution is 13. Your equation should use at least two different operations. So instead of giving a student a problem to solve and then hope that they get the answer 13, you're reversing it and you're giving them the answer 13, and then you're additionally setting some um, parameters or boundaries about what that work is going to look like. So you're asking for an equation and you're asking for two different operations. As you can imagine, students are going to come at this problem in all kinds of different ways and hopefully ways that make sense to them. Um, by giving them these boundaries, you're going to understand or gain some understanding about what students know about the properties of an equation, and then to really check that they know what the word operations is about and what different operations are. Again, what a student's solution says about their mathematical thinking is really helpful for you as a teacher to know A, what they're thinking about this topic, and then B, it can inform where you go next instructionally. Another kind of adjustment you can make to a task to increase its cognitive demand is you can ask the student to represent the problem in multiple ways. So consider this problem, negative 3 plus negative 8. Um, on the surface, that might like, look like a problem that is really at a low cognitive demand. Students might be able to draw in some rules they remember about what it means to add integers. They might even have this as a memorized fact. But instead, when you ask them to represent it in multiple ways, you give them the opportunity to raise the cognitive demand of the task because you're now asking them to, to tell you what they understand about integers and what it needs to add them. So imagine what would happen if you had students solve this problem um, maybe in a standard way, but then you also ask them to solve it on a number line. You ask them to represent it using some sort of manipulative, or you ask them to put it into some sort of context that would give you insight into their understanding about this concept. This is a really interesting and simple way to raise the cognitive demand of a task. Again, you're not even changing the task here, but you're really just asking students to give you uh, more insight into their thinking by representing it in multiple ways. The next thing you can do is to algebraify your problem. And here's a great example that comes from Smith and Stein. So on the left, you see this example about Fun Tees, which is a t-shirt company. And this problem is about uh, calculating percent discount and then ultimately asking how much, uh, it says find the amount of discount on a t-shirt that was originally priced at $16. That's a pretty standard task that we would expect to see um, in any sort of curriculum. But if you look at the over here, the same task, right, asks students to do just a little bit more. So you'll notice this first bullet point is the exact same task as the original. But now, instead of just stopping there, it's consider what, what's going to happen to your problem if the originally priced t-shirt is $17, $18, $19, $50. And then it's describing the price of discount at each, at each cost. This task then goes to another level in which students are then asked to consider the price of any t-shirt. So here, they're now looking for patterns and they're starting to generalize this rule or this uh, relationship between the price of the t-shirt and the discount offered. So you can compare these two tasks and see how they require different types of thinking from students. Um, one is a really useful task and could be um, helpful and insightful to what they understand about calculating a percent discount. But in this task, right, students have the opportunity to take that learning and extend it beyond just this task. 
The last strategy we're going to talk about today is creating an authentic context. And we mentioned that earlier when we were talking about um, that adding integers problem. But here, it's create a real world, real world situation for the following problem, 2 thirds times 3 fourths. Solve the problem you've created without using the rule and explain your solution. So here, you're giving students a problem, but you're asking them to turn it into a contextualized word problem. I really appreciate this strategy because A, it values what students know and what they bring to the table, right? So what would be a context that's of, of great interest to them? But it also lets you know what they understand about the underlying mathematical concept of multiplying fractions. So it really has them thinking about, okay, well, what would be a reasonable context in which this math problem would appear? Then when you have students solve without using the rule, that gives you more insight, and then even more so when you have them explain their solution, right? So they're engaging in that thinking and that discussing, and they're really then tapping into their underlying understanding of what's going on in this problem. Thanks so much for watching the Stair Tailored video. Make sure to check out the next video in this series in which we talk about how to enact these types of tasks in your classroom.